Happy Monday, folks. Uh, we got sports tonight. It means a lot when we don't have baseball and basketball going that we actually got some sports to watch tonight. So let's break down this uh, football again. Yeah, I just every time, you know, the game isn't as good as we would like. I think back to a couple months ago when we would pray for any sort of athletic competition to get us through the night. Yeah, no doubt about it. But we are only a little over a month away from basketball, which is great. Uh, we just found out that Chris Paul's on the move to the Suns. I'm sure Harden to the Nets will probably be done at some point today. I found like that one's almost inevitable at this point, I'm hearing. So we're going to have a lot to talk tomorrow because uh, we're going to do an NBA trade video. Yeah, can't wait, man. I'm, I'm hyped to break that down. All right, guys. Uh, speaking of NBA, we got the deal of deals up from the five pack. We are going to do a full NBA package this year. That means we've done like football and baseball packages before where it's just one sport. You get that like a discounted price. We're going to do an NBA package this year. And we decided to try something new from a marketing standpoint that's working well so far. Uh, great for you guys. Great for us. Early customers get sweet discounts. The package will be $120. It is half price to the second tier customers. Uh, we still got spots left. We're taking a total of 15 customers at half price. That's $60 as opposed to 120. Send 60 to the Venmo or the PayPal address below and it's your spot. I will keep this updated as to when this price changes and goes up, but expect it to be go up from 60 to 75 by the end of the week. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. I uh, don't forget to get in over at Overlay. I uh, got a nice victory last night because it was not a great day at DFS yesterday. But I went pretty heavy on Cam over Lamar Jackson last night. And that thing came down to the last play. And that was fun. That was exciting. I was on the edge of my seat the entire time because I knew exactly who I was rooting for and exactly who I was rooting against. And in a world where all of our fantasy football and all of our pay sites and everything like that that we're playing on, it's nice to know what you're rooting for every once in a while. No doubt about that, man. Part of the fun, part of the fun. All right, guys, subscribe to the station if you're new to it. Thumbs up is always appreciated. Uh, let's talk about the Occam's Razor kiss. Keep it simple, stupid play of the day. That's going to be Vikings running back Dalvin Cook. I don't know, Matt, what do you think his ownership is tonight? Like overall, I'd say 98 in cash and 985 in GPPs. Yeah, I was going to say something to that effect. So I see it like you do. Yeah, he's the best player in this game. I mean, you yeah. guys know it. He's the only one that's a legitimate MVP candidate. Now, granted, the Vikings are going to have to make a push to actually get in the playoffs, uh, which they're trying to do. We don't know if that'll be successful. One of the quarterbacks, but still, this kid's really, really good. Um, best uh, best running back in football so far this year. You can run on Chicago. Chicago's run defense is not great, uh, but their pass defense is really, really good. So if there's any sense in Minnesota, they'll ride the hand of the best player. Yeah, exactly. So listen, I mean, even if you don't think Cook is special tonight, like he's been the past couple of games, it's similar to Lamar Jackson from last night. Like he's going to be involved tonight. Minnesota, you know, gets him the rock as much as any team gets anyone the rock in the league. I mean, there are very few running backs that are used like Cook is. And on a showdown slate, you just ride it. Now, you don't have to captain him if you're talking about getting different, but I think you definitely just plug him in and move on somewhere, the utility or captain. All right, next up, Allen Robinson. So what do we know? The Bears' offense isn't great. Okay, I know that. You know that. Everybody knows that. But Robinson is very good. Um, he is clearly Nick Foles' favorite target. And while there are times that maybe their connection isn't as, as perfect because of a, you know, a tougher matchup or whatever it might be, the young cornerbacks in Minnesota is not a spot that we are worried about right there. Again, I – Kind of like Cook. I don't think Robinson's going to like light the world on fire tonight, but there is a lot of proposed upside right here against a Minnesota team that's had some struggles against wide receivers all season long. And the questionable tag just seems to be a formality at this point. Like it's almost guaranteed this dude plays tonight. Yeah, I'd be shocked if he doesn't play. Uh, you know, obviously, if he doesn't play, I would not look to use him. Um, that's a, that's some astute observation right there. Assuming he's in, though, I mean, you talk about best players in this game. It's Dalvin Cook, and, and then it's Allen Robinson, uh, you know, having a really good year. Gets a ton of targets. Minnesota can definitely get gotten through the air. A lot to like about Robinson here, even though Chicago's offense isn't great. You know, maybe he wouldn't be a guy we would be, you know, going after hard on a main slate like yesterday. But, but he would be in play on a main slate, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you definitely look to receivers against Minnesota – and while Folds isn't amazing, he can get the ball to Robinson. So I like him a bunch here. I think he's a guy you can look to, to captain in tournaments. Yeah, Foles will look for him. He is the top guy on the on the 
uh, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, on the route tree every single week. He is his go-to guy. And while there are times where they'll make life really difficult on him, Minnesota is not the team that has the bodies necessarily to do that. Mm -mm. All right. Speaking of Nick Foles, so in a vacuum, who is a better fantasy quarterback, Kirk Cousins or Nick Foles? I don't know about you, but I'd probably give a subtle nod to Kirk Cousins right here. I agree. Okay. But this isn't a vacuum. This is a matchup-based game. And right now, tonight, Nick Foles gets Minnesota, which is below average against quarterbacks. And uh, Kirk Cousins gets the Chicago Bears, who currently like number one from a fantasy perspective against quarterbacks. Give me Nick Foles. I, I think this is uh, an easy choice for me if I'm choosing between quarterbacks tonight. Yeah, agreed. They're, they're similar in terms of their you know, uh, fantasy production, but you got one facing the Bears and the other facing the Vikings. Uh, yeah. I'm with 100% here. You know, if you want just a very simplistic breakdown – who would you rather pick on? And it's going to be Minnesota from a passing direction every single time. All day. All right, next up. So Kyle Rudolph is the tight end of choice tonight for the Minnesota Vikings with their better route running, more explosive pass catching tight end, Irv Smith not around. Uh, I think we see this one pretty much eye to eye. I don't think like Rudolph breaks the slate. I don't think he's going for big yardage tonight. If he goes over 75 yards, I'll be flabbergasted. But what I can absolutely picture is him catching a touchdown, you know, riding the play action real hard, having the Chicago Bears defense sell it on Dalvin Cook because that's the smart thing to do. And he just meanders into the back of end zone and catches a three-yard touchdown. Yeah, listen, uh, he'd be more of a priority if you needed a tight end position. But on a slate without a ton of good offensive weapons, he makes sense here at this, you know, very affordable price point. No Irv Smith, not a must, but a solid filler piece if you need it. Yeah, I do think uh, I could absolutely see him ending the night with three catches for 19 yards in the touch. For sure, for sure. All right, last up. So we wanted to save the the best, well, not the best for last, but the, I think the most important discussion for the finale right here. Uh, I got Lamar Miller up right now, but the Bears running back situation as a whole is a little bit of a mess today. We all know that David Montgomery is not going to be playing this evening. He's out with a cush, uh, and that brings into what appears to be kind of uh, – a cornucopia of running backs, depending on who's all active tonight. We talked through all of them on the members-only video. The Bears do not have a clear pecking order at running back tonight. Uh, they got that kid, Nall, who had a couple of catches last week. Um, they got Patterson, who's kind of been their backup running back since Tariq Cohen went out. Uh, they got this other kid that neither one of us knew much about. And now they bring in Lamar Miller, the veteran presence. So big thing, he's only $200. Uh, check back to see later on who's active and who's at inactive tonight. The Bears could make things a lot easier tonight and not activate all of these running backs, or they make, 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 might make life very difficult on us and have everybody active. We won't know till later, uh, but you had mentioned earlier that there is some experience with the Bears brass on Lamar Miller from their time in Miami. Yeah, the offensive coordinator for Chicago is the same offensive coordinator that you know was with when he had his most productive season. So again, we're not using him because of that, but Buying signs there. It's a big reason why Chicago picked him up. It doesn't if, hurt. It doesn't hurt. If he's activated here, wouldn't be surprised to see him get a bunch of carries. Uh, and again, it's risky, but he's only $200. And just, uh, you know, stay tuned for info on that. Right. So if all four running backs are active tonight, like where's the best risk? Well, give me the guy who actually has a resume in the NFL and is only $200. Because even if he takes a zero, we've said this before and we'll say it again. You probably don't win GPPs this way, but you don't win GPPs most time you play. But you can definitely place or win cash games with a zero if it's a guy who's only $200, um, especially a guy who probably would get a little bit of love. So it's a little bit more safe. Uh, he just makes a lot of sense if he's active tonight. No doubt about it. 200 bucks. It's a key number right there. Yep. All right, guys. Uh, that's it. I want to wish you all the best of luck this evening. Uh, excited to talk some NBA tomorrow. What's the next big trade that goes down? I mean, it's, I think it's going to be hard, and I haven't heard that it's a done deal like you have. I've heard the rumors, so I expect, if I had to predict, I would expect him to be going to Brooklyn. Done deal's aggressive, close to a done deal. Like, is that what I've been hearing? Again, we'll see if that happens. People can get cold feet. They can change their minds. Maybe they try to, you know, get uh, brazen with them and get somebody in at the extra and things go sour. I'm sure there's plenty of people who would want James Harden on their roster, so I'm sure that there is a market for him. That being 
that'd be quite the haul. And be, they could actually leave Houston in a good spot to rebuild quickly. Yeah, I was going to say, you can't get much. I don't think there's a better haul that they, they could get. I mean, I'm sure there is, but I'm not sure a team would be willing to give it. So I think it makes sense for both teams. As far as the Chris Paul deal goes, just real quickly, I mean, Phoenix gave up a lot. I'm surprised at how much Phoenix got. I mean, not that the young players mean that much, but like, is Chris Paul an upgrade over Rubio and Ubre for next year? Well, so I this here's where it gets to me. If you're a Suns fan and you're trying to be better because you haven't made the playoffs in many, many a hot minute, I can see how next year would make you feel good. But I feel it's like the opposite of what OKC is doing in the sense that like OKC knew they weren't going anywhere with Russ Westbrook and Paul George. Like they gave up. And now they've just got this influx of young talent. They've got an absolute plethora of draft picks. I feel like Cleveland, or not Cleveland, Phoenix is just like, we got to do something. And like now you gave up a guy like Ubre, who we like, you know, and a pick for Chris Paul, who, let's face it, has seen better days. They should not have given up Ubre in that deal. Like, obviously, Paul is an upgrade over Rubio. You don't need both Rubio and Paul. But like, I don't think that Chris Paul is, is, a massive upgrade over Rubio. He is an upgrade. With that contract? Yeah. Like, I mean, listen, and I'm with you. Like, Phoenix is a playoff team next year in my mind. But I don't Not think a playoff team that's got any real chance to win it, though. I don't think they're an upper playoff team. And it wouldn't shock me if, like, you know, if they didn't make the playoffs. Just because there's other really good teams in the West. Does this, in my mind, this has to do something with like a desperation kind of a play to keep Devin Booker. Like we're willing to do something. We want this guy here for the long term uh, and they're trying to make him happy. But I just don't think this is the move that for me, like there's no, you're not going to win the finals this year. It just is not happening. Right. You are not currently constructed going to be a finals team. Um, not even close. Agreed. I mean, I'll say this, like we talked about Chris Paul to Milwaukee. I think that Trying to, th- this is probably a better package than they could have gotten mo- t- from Milwaukee. I think Ubre is probably better any- than any piece Milwaukee would have wanted to deal. Like as far as young upside, I agree. I mean, because Milwaukee doesn't have the pieces that. If you're moving on from Chris Paul, it's because you want to build. And what's Milwaukee going to give you the build on? They don't have anything. They don't have good draft picks. I mean, DiVincenzo is a nice piece, but I he's no difference maker or needle mover. So I I, I get why Fien- I, or Oklahoma City did it. For sure. I mean, like you said, they're just really stockpiling. I mean, they definitely got, when they traded Westbrook for Chris Paul, I don't think they ever could have imagined it work out this well. Where he played one year like that, they made the playoffs, made a nice run, developed their younger players, and then dealt him for a slight downgrade, basically, you know, similar player Rubio, Ubre, a couple other young pieces and picks. Like, come on. Yeah, this is going to be uh, a team to be reckoned with, I think, in a couple of years. I, li- I really like what OKC is doing. Uh, also, I'm going to call it out right now, when Harden, or if Harden does get dealt to the Nets, I don't like that that threesome right there at all. Durant, Harden, Kyrie together. You have no elite defenders. D- Durant's not a bad defender at all, but like Harden and Kyrie are both average at best. Uh, you can also have three guys, none of them who play without the ball, the three guys who really need the ball to play together. I think it's going to flop. Not like they won't make the playoffs. They'll probably be the number one seed right up there. But I think they would lose to LeBron and the Lakers. No doubt about it. Okay, yeah. I was going to ask you what you mean by flop. I don't disagree. Flop, like they're not going to win the championship this year. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, will they be the best team in the East? Probably. That's still a lot of talent. But I don't think that's three guys that fit together. It reminds me a lot of Bosh, Wade, and LeBron, where like they're all really, really, really good players, but they don't fit and mesh together for what you want. Yeah, I mean, that's I've having a Harden LeBron or Harden Durant Kyrie. I don't think we'll, we'll we've ever seen a threesome like that play together. All scorers like that, right? Yeah, three guys that just need the ball in their hand all the time. I and he, again, I kind of joked on Twitter yesterday or a couple days ago, and uh, you said some you, you shared the gif of Kyrie hitting the game winning shot. Like, I can picture Kyrie. Like, all of a sudden, like, I'm the third banana. I'm the third best player on this team, and I don't get the ball. Like, I can just picture him just sitting there uncontent. Yeah, I mean, listen, I have no argument against that. So, we'll see. Anyways, we'll talk more about this tomorrow. Yep, thanks, guys.